Welcome back, everybody. Today, I'll be looking at mathematics for AS level, specifically functions and transformations. All right, so there are a few types of, there's two things you need to know. First thing is an expression, and the next thing is an equation. So the, an equation, as the name suggests, contains an equal, equal to sign and can be solved. So here's an example. So x squared plus 2x equals to 0. And factorizing x out, you can you can solve for x and get the values for x, which is x equals to zero and x equals to minus two. However, for an expression, they can only be factor factorized. So, for example, the same thing, it can only be factorized to this, uh, which is where you take out x and it'll be x brackets parentheses x plus two, or in this case, that's x squared minus three x plus ten. You can factorize it to x minus five multiplied by x plus two. Next up, we have completing the square. Um, this is for quadratic functions. Quadratic functions have our x raised to the power two. We have seen, as you've seen over here, the first example of a quadratic function is x squared minus three x plus 10, which can be factorized in this form. And then in the next case, we have x squared minus six x plus nine, which can be factorized um, into this form. Um, this has two roots. This has one repeated root. And another form can be x squared plus 2x plus 8, which can be written in the vertex form or called the completing the square. So completing the square is represented in the form A, x, uh, A is outside, uh, x plus B, whole thing squared plus C. Or it's also known as a vertex form because the vertex of this graph is minus B and C, where x value is negative B and the y value is C. Um, take note that um, the coefficient of x in completing the square form or the ve vertex form is always 1. If there's a coefficient inside the bracket, it's not completing the square. So let's look at some steps to complete the square using an example. So 3x squared plus 5x plus 6. So like I said, since x can only have the coefficient one of 1, you factorize 3 out and you'll be 3 factorize outside, which will give you x, x squared plus 5 over 3x plus 2. Next thing, what you have to do, you have to represent it in another form. To do that, you have to follow this. You take the coefficient of b, you divide it by 2, which will give you 5 over 6, and then you add 5 over 6 squared, and then you minus 5 over 6 squared. So this, in written in blue ink over here, sorry, if you see a squared minus uh, minus a squared will give you zero. So similarly, you're, you're not changing anything in this form. You're just adding uh, five over six square, and then you're subtracting negative uh, five over six square. So which has been no overall change to the equation. The rest all remains the same. X squared remains the same, and plus two remains the same. Now you have, you can separate this equation to meet this form, which is a x squared plus two ab plus b squared. In this case, a equals to one and b equals to five over six, because five over six times two will give you five over three. And then you separate that it by square brackets in this case, uh, so, uh, by square brackets into x squared plus five over three x plus five over, five over six whole thing squared. And that can be simplified to ax plus b whole thing squared. But in this case, since a is one, it's just x plus five over six squared. And five over six whole thing squared can be expanded to give you 25 over 36. And then you add two to that, which will give you 47 over 36. Um, now you can multiply the three back into the equation, which will give you three times three, sorry, three into x plus five over six whole thing squared plus 47 over 12. Next up, we have um, a few definitions. So domain refers to all the x values for which the function is defined and range refers to all the y values for the for which the function is defined. All right, so it, they might give you uh, um, limits like for example, it could be x is more than or x is more than one or x is less than or equal to two. Those are domains and it's required for sketching. So is range. Range is like I said, it's a uh, y values. It's usually the range usually is um, is related to the vertex. For example, the graph can be defined from um, from the vertex upwards or vertex below. So that's how the how the range is usually defined. In certain cases, the vertex may not even be part of the range given. So be careful uh, when checking when when sketching. Sorry, for sketching the graph, 
you'll be given for sketching a quadratic graph, you'll be given ax squared plus bx plus c. If the coefficient of x squared, which is a, is more than zero, it'll be a u-shaped graph. Or you can think of it as a smile. So when you see a positive number, you smile. So your graph will be u-shaped. If, if a is neg less than zero or a negative number, you frown. That's why you frown at negative things. So it'll be n-shaped graph. Or, or you can also just think of it as a is less than zero will give you an n-shaped graph. The next thing that you need is the x and y intercepts, which can be found by, which you, which you have to find, and the vertex. So finding x-intercept of the vertex, can, you can use this formula, negative b over 2a. So you take the coefficient of b divided by 2a multiplied by negative 1. So finding x-intercepts, you let fx or the function equals to 0 and then you solve for the x values. In certain cases, you may be asked to use the quadratic formula. So uh, if it's, so it depends on what the question says. If the question says, leave it in exact form, you may have to use a quadratic formula. Um, finding y-intercepts, you substitute the value of x equals to zero into fx, and you find for the value of y. Um, similar to what I said earlier, calculating vertex or the x-intercept, the x, um, so your x value the, of x coordinate, sorry, of the vertex can be followed, found by negative b over 2a. Or if you have two x intercepts or, or two roots, you can find the midpoint of two roots or two x intercepts, and that'll be the vertex. The discriminant and number of solutions. So similar to the equation below earlier, we're given another quadratic equation over here, and the discriminant is defined as b squared minus 4ac. Um, b square as in b square refers to the coefficient, a refers to the coefficient of x square, and c refers to the, uh, to the coefficient of the constant. So if the discriminant is equal to zero, it will be repeated roots, or it'll be x plus two whole thing squared. Repeated roots means that it will cut the, or it will intercept the x-axis at one point. If discriminant is more than zero, for example, positive one, positive two, then there'll be two real roots and there'll be two different uh, x-intercepts or two different roots, which can be for in the form x plus two or uh, multiplied by x minus five. These are, this is an example. However, if the discriminant is less than zero, there are no real roots. The, gra the graph lies either above or below the x-axis. So again, if you're, as I mentioned over here, if a is more than zero, it's u-shaped. And if a is more than zero and uh, the discriminant is less than zero, the graph will lie above the x-axis. If the coefficient of x squared is negative and b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, the graph will lie below the x-axis. So that's a way to think about it. Next up, we have inversing a function. So to form an inverse function, you change the position of x and y, rearrange the equation and make y the subject. So here's an example, y equals to 3x plus 5. First thing, you change the positions of x and y, so it's x equals to 3y plus 5. You rearrange the subject and make y the form, oh, sorry, rearrange the, re sorry, rearrange the equation and make y the subject. So y equals to x minus 5 divided by 3. That's your inverse function. And as the x and y values have changed, the range and functions have been, range and domain have been swapped. The range of the function y values, all the, all the y values is equal to now, is equal to the domain of the inverse functions or the x values. So domain of, um, domain of the function, which is all the x values of the original function is equal to the range of the inverse function or the y values. Another thing you must mention is that uh, the inverse function is reflected along the y equals to x axis. Um, that's, that's, a, that's how you can tell if it's an inverse function. Let's say you have function fx and, you, and they give you another function, uh, they draw another function. If the function is reflected along the y equals to x axis, it's an inverse function. Okay, so inversing, fu inversing a function, not all functions can be inversed. Only one is to one functions can be inversed. So what is a one is to one function? A one is to one function has only one value for one value of x and vice versa. Examples of one is to one function can be either a straight line, as you can see, at any point, you just take a ruler and go up and you will always notice there's only one y value or a segment of a curve. In this case, I've drawn uh, a sine 
a y cosine x curve. And as you can see, at this segment from zero to pi over two, this is a one is to one function. For one value of x, you have one value of y. However, if you took from if you took the graph from zero to pi, and you, as you can see by this horizontal line test, one value of y has two values of x, and it's no longer a one is to one function. Hence, the graph cannot be inversed from zero to pi. It can only be inversed in these segments that I've cut the graph into. It can be from zero to pi over two, or it could be from pi over two to pi, or it could be from pi to pi, three pi over two, and three pi over two to two pi. However, the entire function cannot be inversed. Usually, if you're given a curve, um, they will ask you to uh, judge from, they will ask you to state the range and the domain for which the function can be inversed. Uh, you can just sketch the graph quickly and uh, this, uh, just do the horizontal line test as such to find out points at which um, points at which the graph um, can be uh, inverse, which is a one is to one function. A tip is that usually the vertexes are the, are the points in between which the functions can be inverse. For example, um, the graph is going up and it changes direction at the vertex. So that must mean from the vertex to the left and from the vertex to the right, the graph can be um, inversed. However, um, if, the, if you take values that are not from, not, for example, from, let's say you take pi, um, pi over four and, and, and pi. So from here to here, the, the graph cannot be inversed because there's for one value of y, there's two values of x. Next up, we have asymptotes. An asymptote is a value that a function will approach but never reach. Graph is not the graph is not defined for that value. There are a few. There's two types of asymptotes. One is a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. So y equals to negative e x. I'm 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 sure you guys are familiar with this graph. Will never reach the x axis, but it, um sorry, will never have a value of zero, but it will always uh, get closer and closer to the value of zero, but it will never reach y equals to zero. Similarly, for tangent x, uh, y equals to tangent x graph, um, as as the graph approaches pi over two, it will it will approach infinity, uh, but it will never um, it will become an extremely large value, but it will never become infinity, as you can tell. Uh, as you can see by these graphs, this graph will approach this, but it will never reach. Um, so finding an asymptote for horizontal asymptotes that if the top degree, sorry, if the base degree is more than the top degree, the x axis is the asymptote. And in the second case, if the top degree is equal to the base degree, the coefficient of the top is e over the coefficient of the base is the asymptote. And the last case, if the top degree is more than the base degree, there's no asymptote. So I would recommend you to remember the first two points and just ignore the last one because you just look for the first two. There's no need to really memorize the third rule. Here's a few examples. So three over x square. The top or the numerator does not have any values of x. However, the denominator has a, a x value raised to the power two. That means that the base degree is more than the top degree. And hence, uh, the, the asymptote is the x-axis as you can see over here. Um, next up is um, the top degree equal to the base degree, which is showcased over here. This is x raised to the power of one, and this is x raised to the power of one. So they have they both have equal degree. And if you take the coefficient of the top over the coefficient of the base, so six divided by two, that's y equals to three, which which is the asymptote as seen by this graph over here. That's how you find the horizontal asymptotes. For vertical asymptotes, you factorize the top and the bottom, and then you cancel out any common factors, and then you solve for the denominator, which is equal to zero. So let's look at a tangent x graph that I showed earlier. So I split the tangent x graph into sine x over cosine x, and then I solve for the denominator cosine x equals to zero, which gives us pi, which gives us a basic angle of pi over two and x values of pi over two and three pi over two, as you can see by this graph. Using another uh, equation um, as another function as an example, so we have two x square minus three x over x square. So um, we know that they both have the uh, x equals raised to the power of two and x raised to the power of two. 
So the horizontal asymptote is what I call to two because the degrees are the same. For finding the vertical asymptote, you factorize x out and then you divide throughout by x, which will give you 2x minus 3 over x. And solving the denominator for 0, x equals to 0, the vertical asymptote is when x equals to 0. Now we have transformation of graphs. Transformation is moving the graph around, and the first case is translation, which refers to shifting the graph to the right, to the left, up or down. So fx plus or minus c shifts the graph up or down by the value of c. So a good way to think about this is, it is all values of y have either been added by the value of c or subtracted by the value of c. Next case, we have fx plus minus c, which is inside the brackets of the function. Just take note of the difference. Plus minus c is outside the bracket in this case. Um, and then for horizontal translation, um, x plus x and min x minus y, x plus minus c is inside the bracket. So if it's plus, the graph has shifted to the left. All values of x have minus all values of x minus c. If it's a minus sign, the graph has shifted to the right. So all values of x plus c. Translation is mentioned by column vectors. I'll give you example. Um, I'll give you example later on. Here's an example of translation taking place. So we have this graph over here, and we have three points, one, five, three, two, six, seven. And the question might say, I can, so like I said, it's represented by column vectors. So translated by three minus three, that means that it's been, um, it's been shifted uh, to the right by three, which is represented by a minus sign, which is x minus three, and it's been shifted down by a value of minus three, so which is minus c. So fx or brackets x minus three close brackets minus three. So translated by three minus three can also be represented as such. And the graph, uh, like like I said, all the values. If you're confused on how the graph will shift, you can just take points on the graph and then deduct the values. So since it's shifted to the right by three, so one plus three gives us four. Three plus three gives us six. 6 plus 3 gives us 9, and then it's been shifted down by uh, 3, so it's 5 minus 3 gives us 2, um, 2 minus 3 gives us negative 1, and 7 minus 3 gives us 4. That's how you can uh, showcase translations, and you must mention this phrase over here, translated by the column vector. Next up, we have stretches. The graph is stretched either in the y or the x axis in the x axis or the direction. So if the value of a is outside fx, so it's a multiplied by fx, it's a stretch in the y axis by a scale factor of a units. So for example, the black line is sine x and the red line is uh, fx, two times fx or two sine x. As you can see, it's been stretched in the vertical direction. All the y values have been are multiplied by two. For example, the vertex was at one. However, for the red line for two fx, the vertex is at two. So it's been shifted, or sorry, it's been stretched by a factor of two. So, so when you write your answer, you must mention in this, you must write it in this form. It's been stretched in the y-axis by a scale factor of two units in this, in this case. Another, in a, so there's a stretch in the x-axis is represented by f, a x where a is inside the parentheses. However, take note that the stretch is in the by a scale factor of one over a. So in this case, it was f x and this is f two x where two is inside the parentheses. And if you take a horizontal line and find the points, you will notice that um, just look at the x axis for example. This negative one point five eight one and it's negative 3.162 for the same values of y. So you can tell that this has been half. So that's how the, how the stretches um, are in the x-axis. Take note that the vertexes haven't changed. Over here, the x-intercepts haven't changed. Next up, we have reflection. The reflection can be along the x or y axis. The reflection about the x-axis is all y values multiplied by negative one, 
reflection in the y-axis is all y values multiplied by the negative one. So here's an example. Um, similar to stretches, if it's negative one is outside, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's okay. If it's negative one times fx, it's a, a reflection about the x-axis. If the negative one is within the parentheses, it's um, a reflection about the x, sorry, y-axis. As you can see over here, the vertex has remain re remain the same for for the stretch along the y-axis. However, the values have been are shifted. You may be asked to sketch these graphs. Um, it's not very difficult. Um, we've come to the end of uh, transformation and functions. I hope you guys understood everything. And please like and like and share this video. If you have any suggestions, please leave leave them in the comment section. I'd love to give it a read. Um, and thank you so much for watching this video. Goodbye.